Berlin. Uh, and uh, the first known data on the landscape of Eastern Siberia appears in the early 17th century in connection with the Russian Empire colonization of the territory. The need arose in connection with the construction of the first trade roads to create maps for orientation in the area. At this time, the first colonialists built fortified points along the Angara River to pursue an expensive policy towards the indigenous population. In their letters, uh, they wrote that the climate of Eastern Siberia is harsh. The Angara River is a rocky river uh, with steep rapids on which ships often crash. Uh, and the local population, Turgus and Buryats, uh, lead a fishing gathering lifestyle in the dense taiga. At the end of uh, the 17th century, uh, the first Russian villages appears on the banks of the Angara, and the autochthonous population uh, gradually assimilated. Uh, so in the uh, 20th century, the village landscape that had existed for several centuries was disturbed. This was facilitated by the recent water level uh, after the construction of the Bratz hydroelectric power station. Dozens of villages in the Midlangar region were submerged. Uh, so the reservoir formed in their place, annually washes a new archaeological material and destroys coastal archaeological sites. Uh, it is the area near the city of Bratsk that I want to concentrate on today. An excellent example for studying landscape changes is the village of Burnino, since it was not completely submerged uh, as it was located on a high terrace. Using this example, we can trace the formation of the rural landscape uh, of Western Siberia, taking into account uh, local characteristics. The first stage of formation uh, was the colonization of this space in the uh, 8th century. The next stage was the introduction of collective farms due to communist ideology. The third stage was the destruction of the landscape uh, as an element of the dominance uh, of state power over nature. Uh, so, the main aim of this work uh, is to answer the question whether and how remote sensing data can help identify the process of change in the rural landscape. Uh, to analyze the rural landscape, I used a historical map uh, of Russian Empire, showing us image of the cultural landscape uh, through the lens of uh, 8th century men. Uh, the next source of data was historical satellite images uh, of Corona and Hexagon, which allowed us to evaluate the rural landscape of the late fast before the submerge. Uh, separate important source should be uh, Soviet topographic maps. Uh, they are interesting from different perspectives, uh, but when studying them, it is worth remembering cartographic distortions and censorship. Uh, so the biggest challenge in my project was processing the corona uh, satellite images. Georeferencing the satellite images was quite problematic uh, on this area. The Siberian tiger region in the 60s itself did not abound in roads and settlements uh, to which it could be linked in modern times. Therefore, I had to use the mouths of small rivers and the sharp edges of small islands as contra points. The result in low cartographic mismatches uh, was satisfactory for my purposes. Also, another problem is the relatively low resol resolution of corona images for the analysis of small objects on the village. Uh, when analyzing historical satellite imagery, we have the opportunity to see and interpret roads individual yards and houses. I will describe these objects uh, later, but now I ask you to pay attention to the structure of the village as a whole. Uh, the village of Burnino, consisting of two parallel streets, was abandoned uh, in the 70s. Uh, 
based on historical and modern satellite images, uh, I attempt to interpret uh, the spatial organization of this village. So at the end of uh, its existence, Burnina could have about uh, 40, 48 households. According to ethnographic data, private fields separated by borders uh, most likely belonged to different owners. Uh, that is a family consisting of several people uh, could cultivate one field. Uh, the reason why the number of households exceeds uh, the number of private fields is due to the fact that the main increase of their uh, number dating uh, back to Soviet time, uh, times when private forms uh, of property disappear here. Uh, visible cellars, which can be interpreted uh, as basements, show the concentration of development primarily along the streets. Uh, we know that the cultural landscape is influenced by political directives. In this case, the directives of Russian Empire and Soviet Union. Uh, so general knowledge about the system allows us to identify objects and show their variability over time. So the first village development associated with colonization was characterized by closeness uh, and complexity. Uh, such complex construction referred to wooden forts built at the beginning of Russian colonization during fights uh, with indigenous people. Uh, apparently, uh, during the uh, establishing of the first villages in Eastern Siberia, uh, the situation with the autochthonous people uh, continued to be tense. Each household was self-sufficient with a barn, a pen for animals uh, and a house. Uh, so, uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, the rural landscape suddenly changed. Communist ideology uh, and government directives influence uh, the emergence of collective farms. They are located on the sides of former private fields, uh, also uh, on the border of these fields closest to the village, new residential rural yards are appearing. In addition, uh, a school was built on the outskirts of the village. All of the above shows not only the transition from private uh, to collective property, but also such elements of the Soviet system as the propaganda of scientific thought. Uh, uh, so I was able to record a similar situation with collective uh, farming facilities uh, sent to Corona satellite images in, in the neighboring villages of Materikovaya, uh, Moskovskaya and Antonova that are currently submerged. <clears throat> The analyzed objects were also built on early fields uh, located on the edge, uh, edge of villages and are large in size uh, compared uh, to any private buildings. In the mid 20th century, uh, began a program to build a cascade of hydroelectric power station uh, on the Angara River. At the same time, hundreds of villages from the Angara Valley were burned or, or moved uh, and then submerged by the waters of the reservoir. In addition to villages, many well known uh, uh, and thus it undiscovered archaeological sites went underwater. This does more than uh, just tell us more about the state's relationship to heritage. Uh, we see the Soviet state inviting the cultural landscape. The landscape of Siberian villages, which was shaped by the Tsarist system. Uh, was this directive conscious? Hardly. But one way or another, it came from a communist ideological base. Uh, the destruction of villages was preceded by the destruction of churches uh, and other cultural monuments in early uh, Soviet times. Uh, and at all these are examples of a different order. They show the attitude of the totalitarian state to the landscape identifying the past regime. 
using the example of the destruction of Siberian villages, we see that between the preservation of objects uh, of archaeological and ethnographic significance and the cheap increase in electricity production, the state chooses uh, the latter. All this shows us not only the dominance uh, of the state over men, but also the attempt to dominate state power over nature. And now I would like to move on to brief conclusions. Firstly, it is knowledge about the system uh, that allows us to identify parts of the cultural landscape. Studying ethnographic data helps to understand the nuances. Uh, the remote sensing data analysis in this project make it possible uh, to determine the spatial organization at stages uh, of landscape changes in, in the Siberian villages. Unfortunately, much of the data from Eastern Siberia is unavailable uh, or distorted. And next, analysis of remote sensing data is useful in the context of research on the destroyed landscape of Eastern Siberia. Historical satellite imagery is of great importance there, providing the most detailed source of information. In this context, future researchers of this territory face an important task. They will have to be open to new technologies and new approaches. And lastly, this work was carried out and funded, and funded under the best student grant at the Adam Mickiewicz University. And Professor Ronczkowski, thank you very much for support. Thank you.